they're all going to be as accurate as the one. So find your most accurate meter. That was not a happy sound. Cheap multimeters can be found almost anywhere for less than $10, and some places even give them away, such as Hardware Freight. So, you may be wondering, are these any good? Or, if you already have one, can I make it more accurate? And the answer to that is, yes, you can. Now, typically, when these come from the factory in China, they're not very accurate because there's just a single potentiometer on the inside to adjust the accuracy and, of course, they're not up to like super high specs or anything. So, I figured I'd show you how you can calibrate it to be as accurate as another more expensive meter, such as this one, this EX430 from X-Tech. So, to start off, you're obviously going to need two multimeters, one good one, and one that you would like to calibrate. Now, I would not recommend trying to calibrate a meter like this simply because it's a lot more difficult. There's many more potentiometers on the inside to try to figure out. Plus, this one I think I got for free as an MPJA promotion. So, if it breaks, I'm not really losing anything. I'm losing a meter that would normally cost $5. So, I already pulled the screws out. And here's what's inside. There's some shielding there. And that's the inside. There's not much in these low-cost meters. Inside is a continuity buzzer. Um, some really botched construction there. As you can see, it's held in with one screw. It's at an angle. It's pressing against the main chip. Pressing against the spring. The fuse is soldered into place, meaning that if you blow it, you can't really easily replace it. And the input is held in place by two solder joints. So very low quality but what we want is that inside every meter like this there should be a potentiometer up in there around around this area they're easy to identify to adjust these all you should need is a flathead or a phillips screwdriver either one should work you're going to need a relatively small one though now that we have both set up i'll show you my calibration setup so you're looking at my setup. I have a DC power supply connected to the two multimeters via some alligator clips there. The X-Tech is set on DC auto ranging and the cheap free meter is on 20 volts DC. So what I do is I pick a voltage. I always reference it off of that one because that's the accurate one. If possible, I try to get it spot on, which is difficult with a cheap power supply such as this one. That's close enough. And if you're looking at this, you're gonna notice it's just about spot on. That's because this was calibrated very recently as of yesterday. So, that's why it's very accurate. But the process is the same nonetheless. I will skew the results just to show you how it works. So on the back, there is a potentiometer and I'm going to adjust it. I'm just gonna screw it up just to see what we get. So, we're getting 10 volts on the X-Tech, now we're getting 11.3 something on this. And that is awful, that is well out of spec. So, I take my screwdriver, and I simply turn slowly, but as you can see, I'm pretty close. Um, the trick is to make very small adjustments. Now sometimes what I do is I crank the voltage all the way, if it's difficult to get it to settle on a higher range, I turn the supply all the way down, which in this case is 1.241 volts, and then I also turn this all the way down. And as you can see it's actually spot on. So it's not going to get much more calibrated than this. So if I like crank this way up, it's, they're pretty close. They're about as close as they're gonna get. They're almost exact. I mean, yeah, they're a couple millivolts, up, millivolts off, but honestly, that is not going to make a huge difference. For all I know, this could be off by that much to it. Also make sure you have a new battery. 
more often than not, the batteries actually can cause problems with this, and I'll probably do a video in the future showing how voltage levels affect these. But this process should be the same for any cheap meter. Calibrating cheap multimeters, very simple. I recommend it, because now I have a fleet of cheap multimeters that are all fairly accurate. Oh, that's going to do it for this video. I hope to see you back here in the very near future with more videos.